Good morning to you all. Good morning. It's lovely bit of sunshine. I thought winter would really come as you could turn so cool the last couple of mornings, but a very, very warm welcome to each and every one of you. And um, we are being led in worship this morning by Janet Patrick, and we look forward to hearing from her. Over to you, Janet. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am so pleased to be back with you. I was with you about six months ago, so it's six months. I was very fortunate. Um, I'm using the lectionary readings today, which are used throughout Methodism and through Anglicanism, so I think it helps us unite together. And the text that I'm going to preach on is taken from the Old Testament reading, Psalm 137, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? But let us continue our worship with this most beautiful hymn by George Herbert. King of glory, king of peace, I will love thee. God, how good it is to be here on this late summer morning to worship you. We have so much to thank you for. Lord, we thank you for the seasons, the warmth of the summer sun, the changing colours of the flowers and leaves on the trees that are beginning to turn golden. And we thank you for this community here in Grangewood, for Christine the minister, for all who are involved in the life of this church, not only this morning, but throughout the weeks and years. We give thanks for all the work of this church, and we remember those who have gone before, those who loved us into the church. And today we especially remember Lorna Wayne, who died last week. We thank you, Lord, for all that makes life worthwhile, the kindness of others to us, the tiny things in life, exchanging smiles and greetings every day, helping other people, all the many things we take for granted, 
like clean water in our taps, reg regular refuse collections, toilets that flush, electricity always available, a great national health service, and also living in a society that cares for our needs. But most of all, we thank you for your great love for humankind, the love that sent your son Jesus to live amongst us as one of us. He brought the good news that your love is for all people everywhere, a love that never fails, and that your kingdom is one of justice and peace. And knowing that we are loved by you brings joy and meaning to our lives. Lord, we give thanks for the ability to be gentle, the strength to forgive, the patience to understand, for endurance to hold on to what is right, for good that overcomes evil, and sometimes for an angry love that we need for a vision of a new world knowing always that love will be stronger than evil. Yet, Lord, although we love you, we so often act in a way that shows we forget you. <coughs> Loving Father, we confess our sins. We have sinned against you in what we have thought, said and done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and turn away from what is wrong. Forgive us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We ask these prayers through Jesus, our friend and our Redeemer. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we come to the children's story. I remember long ago at Wallerton Road, I said, do you want a children's story? What if there aren't any children? They said, Janet, we love a children's story. Even if there is none, we love it. And we often listen to the children's story more than the sermon. But we have one little girl here today. Is that right? Two. Two. Sorry, it's because you're looking so grown up. <laughs> right, but you, the rest of you can listen. Now, this is one of my favorite stories. It comes from Russia. It was written by Mar um, Leah Tolstoy, and it's called Martin the Shoemaker. Do any of you know it or not? Yeah. Well, that's good if you don't know it. Right, here we are. This is the room. Can you see it? That's right, right. And this, his name is Martin. And what his job was, he used to mend and make shoes, just like your shoes. And in those days, people, when I was a child, you had your school shoes and your best shoes. <laughs> so shoes were very important. And there is Martin. And he lived in his house. It was below the ground. And so he had to look up and see people with their shoes on. And he used to recognize them by their shoes. Because he clean so many of them. I know. You can have it. Can you have it out? <laughs> so this is a story of Martin the shoemaker. And he lived. And there, I think I'll just carry on. And there he is. And there he is. So he had to look up and he recognized people by their shoes. And what he did, he Oh, didn't me. And what he did was he worked all day, and in the evening he would sit and read his Bible. And he loved to read his Bible every night, and it made him very happy. And one night he was reading the story about the rich man who invited Jesus to come and see him. And he thought, hey, what if Jesus came to visit me? What if Jesus came to visit me? Wouldn't that be wonderful? 
And then, there we are, oh, what a good girl. Then he went to bed. There he is, that's his bed. And he was going to sleep, and suddenly he heard a voice. And the boy said, Martin, Martin, look out for me, because tomorrow I am coming to visit you. Yes. And when Martin rubbed his eyes, he said, was it a dream, or was it real? And he went back to sleep. And there he is. I'm not sure he's just woken up. It's fine, do not worry. I, I, I think you're doing very well indeed. Anyway, he decided to wake up very, very early in the morning, which he did in case Jesus should come very early, and looked out into the street, and then what did he do? It was bitterly cold. Can you imagine in Russia? And there was Stefan. Stefan was um, the street cleaner, and he had to broom the snow away. It was bitterly cold, and he looked at him, and he felt very sorry for him because it was so very, very cold. And so he said, Stefan, Stefan, come and have a cup of tea with me. Come and get yourself warm. And so he did, and there is Stefan warming himself. And as he warmed, he just... <laughs> I don't know if this is co competition, <laughs> but I think she's going to win, whatever it is. Anyway, here we are, and look, he put his hands in front of the fire, and he felt better because of what Martin had done for him. Martin felt better too. And so off he went to carry on with his work. And and Martin looked again, but nobody was coming. He waited and waited and waited. And then he saw this young woman with a baby in her arms. She hadn't got a coat. It was bitterly cold and the baby was crying. So of course he called her and said, come in, come in. Come into my house and warm yourself. And so she came in. And there she is. And he gave her some soup, and then he remembered he'd got an old coat downstairs. So we went, to, oh, there it is, he's got the coat, and he was going to give it to her, and the baby, instead of crying, the baby began to smile. And he said, he said, don't come again, don't wait to be invited. Any time you are welcome. And so that's what happened, and he gave her some soup, and then he gave her some money, so that she could go buy some milk. But he went back and he had his lunch, but still Jesus did not come and he waited and it was nearly time to close when he heard a shouting outside and he looked and he saw a little boy with an apple and an old woman with a basket of apples that she was selling and he had pinched one from her and she was giving him, well you can imagine, a real what for. A real what for, and what she was going to do for him, I won't even tell you. And so Martin went up to her and said, Mother, mother, can't you forgive him? It is only an apple. It is only an apple. Think of our sins that are many, and God forgives us. Surely you can forgive him. And the woman thought. And then she looked at the little boy. And the little boy looked at her. And he said, sorry. He said, I'll carry you all back home for you. And that's what's happened. Here we are, upside down. <laughs> and then, that's them going home together. And they started really bad mood, but they went home together. So Martin had had a good day. And he was so disappointed because Jesus had not come. And Jesus said, watch out for I'm coming. Where was Jesus? And so he, he looked and he was very disappointed. And he thought, then he got a strange feeling. He felt as if it wasn't in the room at home. The room was warmer and somebody, something was there. And it was as if some people were in the room, but he couldn't make out who they were or what they were. And then he and the bird boy said, Martin, didn't you recognize me? And that was Stefan. And the next one, me, and out of the shadows 
step, step up. And then, this was me too, the voice said again, the same voice. And there was a mother with a little girl. And the baby came forward and the baby smiled. And you smiled. And the baby laughed. And it was me as well, the boy said. And there was the old woman together with the boy who had taken the apple. I think I'm going to give this apple to you. Would you like it? <laughs> <laughs> there we are. And the end of the story was the shoemaker realized that his dream had come true after all. That Jesus really had visited him that day. And he began reading the Bible, where it had fallen open when he went to sleep. But it was a different page from the <coughs> book he left. And this is what it said. And I think you can guess what it would have said. It said, Inasmuch as ye have done it, for the unto the least of these my brethren, we'll excuse them, but you know, we know what it means. Ye have done it for me. And so Jesus comes to us, especially when we are doing good deeds for others. Now I'm going to let you borrow this book. It's just one of my treasures. So, thank you. And now we come to our, our, our very next hymn, which is... Um, to, uh, I usually get my service. 6339, for those of you that have um, a hymn book. Um, Through the love of God our Saviour, all will be well. <coughs> Sung to the Welsh tune, Arhida Norse. because something is going to be a bit different. The text is 
how shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? And because I was new to this, I thought this is a very challenging thing. And I spoke to Ian Rack, who is my great guru, and my husband, who are both fine preachers, and say, What do, do you have you ever preached on this? And Ian said, Aha, Bernie M, Bernie M, 1976, top of the pops. He said, That's how I came to this. And I, I had to, I had to preach on it. I didn't ask him what he actually preached, I'll come to that later. So we are going to, before we have, Stephen is going to read the lesson to us, which is um, Psalm 137. Before that, Thanks. Is it Matthew? I'm dead and got get your name wrong. Matthew, very kindly, is going to have a show us, and we can listen to Boney M and the original. This um, by by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yet there we wept. So I'm going to sit there myself. So. <laughs> So I'll read now Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows, there we hung up our harps. For here our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth, if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem's fall, how they said, tear it down, tear it down, down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, you devastator, happy shall they be who pay you back, what you have done to us. Happy shall they be who take your little ones and dash them against the rock. <coughs> oh. Just let me add something to that, as a bloodthirsty end to it. Uh, in my commentary it said, you must keep that, because that's how people thought in these days, and you must not play about with the words. Did you follow me? And now we're going to the second uh, New Testament, Barbara's going to read. Um, let me just get my act together. I find this a rather baffling message, actually. The disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith, but perhaps they put a little too much emphasis on their faith, if you follow me. And Jesus wants them to think less about themselves and concentrate more on what they are doing. I find this very useful, but a difficult step to take, because sermons and worship should always point to God and not point to the preacher, and we preachers need to remember that. And Barbara's going to read us from Luke 17, verses 5 to 10. Thank you. and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from ploughing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you think the slave, do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, 
We are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. Have the offertory prayer and the offertory, please. Lord and God, we thank you for all that we have done. We know all that we have comes from you, and of your own to be given. We pray for this offertory that it may be used for your work and your service. Amen. Amen. I chose partly because I heard it at the Queen's funeral. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. This was one of Charles Wesley's wonderful hymns, We Methodists Sing Our Faith. Anglicans recite this, We Sing Our Faith. And to have it sung at the Queen's funeral by millions of people listening it. I was very glad to be Methodist. And we do sing our faith, and so let us sing this with great joy. Love divine, all love excelling. I think it's sung again to another Welsh tune called Blind Wine. <coughs> I was brought up in Welsh, so you'll have to excuse my little Welsh emphasis. Love divine, all love excelling, joy of heaven to curl, earth and down, fixing us thy humble dwelling.
how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I did find this very challenging. And I had to remember that it's the Lord's song all the time. It's not our song, it's the Lord's song. And as I mentioned before, I asked my husband and I asked Ian, and Ian told me all about Bowie M, and, I, and he could never forget that, and John went and found the, uh, the clip. And then uh, John had preached about it, and I looked at it. He unfortunately didn't have his old service, he just had the order of service, which is annoying. But, and when it came, when it came to the sermon, it said, sermon from Africa. And it took me a little bit while, I thought, why was he put that in? Then I realised we had lived in Nigeria twice for four years, in Malawi for nine years, 13 years, and Africa really was a strange land to us when we entered. And things were done very differently. But the church was growing and the church was full. And so we have a great deal to learn from the, ch uh, the strange land, which was Africa. And then, I don't know if you listen to something remembered on a Sunday morning at six o'clock. Well, I, I, I'm not a good sleeper, and I, I do listen. And last week, it was all about it was all about it was all about look, homesickness. And below me, there was Mark Tully, one of my favourite speakers, speaking about Psalm 137. And he also reminded us, as you may know, he lives in India permanently, an Indian wife, and he said how he still feels homesick for England, although he's lived in India all his life. And then he said, first of all, when we think of Psalms, and this is what he said, we think of David, but this is actually not the same time as David at all. It's, not, it's after David. And he said, here they were, it was a poet, we don't know who it was, writing retrospectively of the Jewish exile in Babylon, about 587, five, nearly 600 years before Jesus was born, and interpreting it, a song of sadness. The Israelites were in Babylon. They wept for Zion, that is Jerusalem. They wept. But Jerusalem had been destroyed. So it says they, it's so beautiful. They hung, they hung their lyres on the willows, but their captors forced them to sing a song of joy when they didn't feel at all <coughs> joyful. All they could do was remember Jerusalem and their God. It's a most poignant, beautiful, and sad story. And I think it speaks to our world today. We are now living in a strange land. No, we are living in what seems to me a very strange world. And I remember at the beginning of 2020, John was just about to be 80, we're going off for a holiday, we heard about the pandemic in China and that it might spread across the world. I just didn't believe it. I just, why should it come? We, we can deal with anything, can't we? Anything at all. Nobody saw it coming, but it changed everything. It really changed, it's changed the church, it's changed the way we do things. A lot of people we know died, one of their counsellors and the counsellor died. It changed a lot of things, it changed everything. So how can we sing the Lord's song in this strange <coughs> land? So I had to think about a bit hard and say, what then really is the Lord's song? Not our song. And don't think that only Christians sing the Lord's song. They generally well don't. It's lo lots and lots of people can be called to sing the Lord. And I thought, what do I think? And I thought of Mary's song. I don't know why. It just hit me. Mary, before Jesus was born. A, a, a song of commitment. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. And then I thought of the song of Martin the cobbler. And there were again the words of Jesus. Inasmuch as he did it for the least of these my brethren, he did it for me. That must surely be an important part of the song. And so this morning I just want briefly to describe how I think we and the Christians and many other people did really try to sing the Lord's song, not just in COVID, 
but, uh, but after and in the war in Ukraine, and as now we are coming to really hard economic times, when the poor will face a choice of food or fuel. It's quite simple, and we cannot say it is not becoming because it is almost here already. If you looked at your, we have a little measure for electricity in our house, and the, the difference between Saturday night and Sunday morning was just amazing. The prices shot up. Now, during lockdown, we watched the TV every day, well, we did in our household, I expect you did. We looked at the number of deaths, but we also looked and heard about the community groups, old and many new ones, that rose up to help those in need. And on Thursday night, do you remember, we went out to the street to clap for the NHS and how we met people in the street we hadn't talked to for years. And we got a new sense of community. Out of bad times, good things can come. And I want to read, I, I have brought it with me, a little book written by John, Jan Pickard, who is, well, she were, she's a friend of mine, but she's a Methodist and a poet. And she gathered together Voices Out of Lockdown, and it's called, well, it's called Voices Out of Lockdown. And I want to read you this one poem, not by Jan, by somebody else. It's called, We Haven't Cancelled Worship. We haven't cancelled worship. We've cancelled a religious service. At a specific time, in a specific place, on a specific day, but folks will still worship God when they are caring for the grandchildren, walking their dogs. Worship as they serve beside Jesus at the food banks and pick up groceries for neighbours. Worship when they share the Spirit's peace by singing songs over the phone. I'm sure we did it to parents. Worship when they work from home. Worship when they endure extra shifts in nursing homes and group homes. Worship when they email someone far away or wave to a stranger across the street. Worship when they take toilet paper to a homeless shelter and volunteer at a polling place. We haven't had the worship, just the official part, and that may be the smallest part of all. We were in a different world. I believe we were called to new, a new song. We became communities, caring for each other. Neighbours offered help. Food ranks grew and grew and grew. People baked cakes and gave them away. And a little girl in Branca was so moved, she set up a stall outside her house and she painted stones and sold the stones and gave it to her. And she made over a hundred pounds. And Broxtogara Council cancelled its annual ball. It didn't actually have any, any choice. But it gave the money instead to hope. And at Christmas, it raised £30,000 from local businesses and residences and gave vouchers and Christmas hampers to needy families and asylum seekers and anybody we could find in need. I know this because I was the mayor at that time. And I will never forget delivering a Christmas hamper in my ward in a pouring rain. It was really awful. And I, as I dripped as I handed it over and the house owner gave me a big hug and what's more she gave me one of her old umbrellas <laughs> as I was soaking wet. We, ex we exchanged gifts, do you understand? To give is also to receive. And later when we met again sometime in the street and I was out counselling, we gave each other a big hug and we laughed together. But then after COVID, or even really during it, came that terrible war in Ukraine. A war that has affected the whole world and goes on and on. A strange, terrible world that we live in. And the president of the Methodist Church made a statement, and just remind you, it was in February, the statement. I think it was Sonia Hicks was the minister. I don't know if you know. She's from, well, her husband is from Chilwell Road Methodist. This is what she said. We are horrified and heartbroken 
As we witness the violent assault on Ukraine by the Russian military, we pray for the Ukrainian and the Russian people. Christians are called to pursue, pursue peace. And we ask you to pray for all politicians that there may be an end to aggression. Sadly, there is no end to aggression. The future looks terrible. But what is the song we have sung throughout Britain? We have sung a welcome, certainly, I know you've done it in Nottingham, but I, I just because I know the numbers and the people in Broxtow, we have now a hundred Ukrainian families. When I say families, they're not men. They're women and generally young children and some old people. And the, I expect you know this already, the government gives household, you, you, basically you rent a room in a house. If you need it, it's two rooms. It does not include food, you find your own food and the host is given £350 a month to care for you. And imagine when the, and that started in April, that's for six months only, to be increased if agreeable on both sides, and some it will be, and in some it, it will not be. So you can imagine how difficult, how difficult that is. And you may know this, I know it, so I'll tell you, but the Matt Fugles Mance, in Beeston is now being used and it's on the 6th that they're coming in to a Syrian family and it's a community group in Erewash which includes Methodists that are paying for the family to come that will pay for the rent and the family with three children will be in Matt Fugel's house so it's very good that we Methodists are, are involved. It is not an easy thing having people in your house and after six months it is some ways it's it's gone very well because people have, have good spirit, good heart. But in some cases it has been difficult. But again, this is a two-way transaction. John and I have just come back from holiday. Blow me, we both got the flu. And who should phone us up and say, Can I do some shopping for you? Our Ukrainian friend Alina. Always when we do good things, they come it's always a two-way. Don't think it's always us doing good, it's both way. And besides the war, we come to this fuel and economic crisis which affects us all, which I think we, it's so difficult to be prepared for it. And now some people will be glad of a reduction in their income tax. Let me remind you about all those people that don't pay income tax. How is things going to be better for them? The food banks are responding and supermarkets are helping. <coughs> Councils and churches will do what they can, providing warm places, that's the latest thing, and I think Nottingham Council <coughs> is going to have spaces, warm spaces, so people can come and they can provide at least coffee and tea, and that's the sort of thing churches can do. The citizens' advice, and I've been a member for many years, is busier than it's ever been, and it reports that even when they help people claim all the benefits they can, 36% of them will still be living in poverty. And as I wrote this, a friend came to lunch, and she'd said she'd just been to a food bank to give some things. She said the shelves there were empty. People cannot even afford to give so much to the food banks as they have been doing. It seems that we are living in a very strange land, and yet this song of caring and loving is needed as ever before, because this is the Lord's song, to be sung not only in churches, but everywhere, and especially in the Houses of Parliament, because our government should treat people fairly, and it needs to be sung there as never before. And now I've asked Margaret, and she's going to come and say something <coughs> about the song you are singing in Grangewood. <coughs> I'm actually going to be asking you as well to help me on this one, because um, I don't want to miss anything. Um, I'm going to start off by saying the song that we're singing here at the moment is, is helping our young people. Um, Jessica would ordinarily be here, but um, as a lot of you do know, she's at Three Generate this weekend. They've taken 23 young people and seven leaders, and uh, I know that they're having a good time. So that was one thought I had. I know um, on a Tuesday we have saplings here, 
uh, and she has between 25 and 30 families coming each Tuesday to be able to come into our premises and to be able to hear the things that we are all talking about to them. I know we have lots of other groups meeting and I know um, Ladies Fellowship is another outreach. Um, who goes to Ladies Fellowship and could tell me how many you get there? I think Anne might have mentioned it. Oh yes, okay, yeah, there is Anne there. Eighteen. Eighteen. So again, there's eighteen ways of us being able to communicate and to be able to start sing the song. That's a wonderful song that we've been talking about this morning, God's song. Uh, I know we have um, food bank here on a Friday, and again, I can see Betty here straight away. I know just that, and of course, food bank at Hope that. Um, uh, I know uh, Brenda does and from Joan. So how many on a, on a Friday maybe, Betty, do we reach out to, giving out parcels? Very variable. Like yes. Three. Sometimes as many as five families. Indeed. So again, it, it varies, but again we're able to reach out. Yeah. And similarly, I know um, uh, with prayer group, there were, there were six of us, wasn't there, Joan and Brenda, on, uh, yeah. on Thursday night. And I know what an important part of our, of our active prayer and, and commitment to the people in this community and further afield, knowing how many prayer because there's sorry Jill, I missed you out on that occasion. This is the only thing when you start naming names. You, <clears throat> oh dear dear. Anyway, um, so here we are, Saplings on a Saturday. It's another way we're able to reach out. For those of you who are not aware, and um, lots of the, I have to say, mums used to come on a Tuesday with their children um, and um, dads used to think, well, I'm not getting an opportunity to come, I'm working. So, Saplings on a Saturday started, and I know a lot of us go along there and cook and make bacon butties for the dads, and now some of the mums have started coming as well on a Saturday as well, so this is good, this is good. Off the Point is another ecumenical uh, area where we reach out and touch other people's lives. I know arts and crafts meet on a Monday morning, and who's here? Barbara I know's here. Uh, how did you normally get on a, on, a sun, uh, on a Monday morning, Barbara, for arts and crafts? About 12. About 12, again, a mixture of the community coming here to chat and to talk and to share their, their concerns. Yeah. So, is there anything else that I might have just missed? Oh, from Eden. Eden, I know that was what we have on a monthly basis. Uh, and I know you, Brenda, are, are in the kitchen there sorting out the food. And last time, Brenda, how many children do you think you were feeding well, and parents? As for children and parents, I didn't have time to count, but we did have uh, jacket potatoes for 50, and some of them were halved, and lots and lots of fillings. And so lots, there you go, lots, folks, lots again, 50 plus on, on, on a Sunday. So there, Janet, is a little, just a little quick snapshot as to, as to what we're doing. So, um, I think it's wonderful, don't you think it's wonderful? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And is there anybody else who hasn't spoken who would like to say anything extra or different? Well, I think you've covered everything, Barbara. We come now to our next hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. Now it is easy to say, Now Thank We All Our God, when all is well. But this <coughs> most famous of hymns of praise and thanksgiving was written for, well, it was written around, but during the third, at the end of the Thirty Years' War in Germany, between 1617 and 1649, and it was written by Martin Rinkhardt, an old, frail pastor who cared for his congregation throughout the Thirty Years. They called him Father Courage. He was said at one stage to have officiated in 40 funerals on one day, including that of his wife. And these words have been called the German Tideum. They also sit, let us sing to it with great thankfulness for all that God has done for us. Now thank we all our God. If you have a hymn book, it's 81.
come to our prayers of intercession, our prayers for others, and our prayers for ourselves. Let us all pray. Loving God, we come before you with great thankfulness for all you have done for us, knowing that you love us always and without any conditions. We bring our prayers of intercession to you knowing that all our needs are known to you already. We pray for the world, your world, that you sent your Son to us as one of us, that we might learn about your kingdom of love. We pray for your church on earth, rejoicing that you are worshipped in every land. And we pray that we who worship you may be united in your truth and live together in your love. <clears throat> Lord, we are living in strange times and are facing a church which is growing smaller. Help us to find new ways of being the church in our communities especially in these hard times. Help us to reach out to, your, to our communities to offer a caring love that listens without criticism. And we give thanks for our Trent Valley Circuit, for all our past ministers, for the work of this circuit over so many years and all it has meant and now it still means to us. Lord, we are in challenging times. We pray for Ruth, our recent superintendent, and for Christine, who has taken over her role. May we all care for, for this circuit and support Christine with our prayers in every way we can. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we pray for all governments and those who serve the common good, that they may govern in justice and peace. We pray for all local councils, that in these times of austerity, they care for those in the greatest need. We pray for all churches and community groups who will be providing food and warmth for those who have to choose between food and fuel this winter. And using our new Methodist prayer book for the second day of the month, we pray with Christians in West Africa and give thanks for the cooperation of the people in the Gambia especially a good relationship between Muslims and Christians as they live and work together. We also pray for Sierra Leone and the commitment they have to renewing the church's vision and mandate for mission. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we pray for all those throughout the world who never have enough to eat. For children who die of unnecessary diseases for those who are forced to flee their homes because of war or strife, remembering those, Lord, who never live until they die. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we pray, Lord, for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia, for their countries and their leaders, that the war in Ukraine will cease. And we pray, Lord, we pray that peace will come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Let us pray for those we know and love in our communities, our families, our friends, those who are sick, for those who face difficulties within their family life, for those who are lonely, for all those for whom life is such a struggle. And let us rejoice in the witness of Lorna Wayne, who died recently. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And finally, we pray for ourselves. Oh, we pray that we may see Jesus in everyone we meet, that we may forgive others, but that we may also forgive ourselves. And we rejoice that we are your children, always, always loved by you. We ask these prayers through Jesus, our friend and our saviour. Amen. Amen. Our last hymn echoes what is said to be John Wesley's final words. Best of all, 
is God is with us. It was written by Andrew Pratt. Andrew Pratt is and what, well, a reasonably well-known minister. He himself left the church and came back to it. He has struggled, and we are so glad that we have this hymn in our hymn book, the last words of John Wesley, that we can sing it together. 610 from the hymn book, Best of all is God is with us. is dead. So temper our faith with love and hope that we follow Christ and give ourselves freely to people in their need. Then the lives we live may honour you forever. Amen. Amen. And let us say the grace to each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us always. Amen.